Hello and welcome to the video everyone, I'm Tierzoo. Got a bit of an educational video today for Game Builder Garage. The criticism I've had of Game Builder Garage before was the inability to link games together to make like a true game rather than standalone levels. Turns out it's been part of Game Builder Garage the whole time and I just didn't see it. So I got my menu here. The two options, you can see the fish, be the fish. So you press A to launch the little ball. Whichever one you break is the game you go to. So this one, oh, I broke both of them there. But anyway, this one takes you to Fish Watching Simulator 2022. And notice at the bottom, I put a little prompt there. Then you click the L stick, it'll take you back to the main menu. Ta-da, you're back. You go over here, break this one. And my new game, Fish Simulator 2022. So instead of just watching the fish, you get to be the fish. Got the little bubblers in the corners. You got these little decorations in the bottom of your tank. You push these over. Wee! Push the treasure chest around. Push the diver over. Get out of here. I got these two portals right here. One to reset the level, and one to go back to the menu. So you just swim right through. Everything's reset. You take the other one, back to the menu. So the way this works is using the swap node on right here. So you can either go back to the previous game or to a game with a specific keyword. So swap target keyword is the game you're moving to and game keyword sets the keyword for the current game. So this one, I called it swap tester first. So the keyword is ST1. You can choose to transition to the other game with or without a title screen. And I think it looks a lot cleaner to transition without a title screen. This is the destroyed sensor. So when the object connected to this sensor is destroyed, it sends a signal. I got it hooked up to a timer. It's a 0.2 second delay before it sends a signal to the swap node on, and it immediately sends a signal to the play sound node on. Another way to open up the settings for the node on quickly is to press the Y button. Now about the fish watching simulator, the one thing I didn't show off about this is that you can play the piano on here. It's got ABXY, LR, ZL, ZR, and the directional arrows all linked to a key. And obviously in order to switch between the games, you have to have them all on your console. So I'm gonna include the IDs for each game in the description of the video. Another hint to show off here is if you open up the settings for the button, you can see all the buttons you can assign, including the sticks. But if you just go to the input menu over here, and you go to button presses, it only shows these. So you open up the settings of the button press node on, you can choose any button you want, except plus, minus, home, and screenshot. The one thing I will say is annoying, is that it activates the node ons even when you're in the programming screen. So if I press any of the keys, you can play the music behind the scenes. So I'll show you another reason why that's irritating in the next game. You open up the program screen, you can hear the bubbling sound effects I have assigned. So I'd say that's the one annoyance with this is things happening in the background, which I don't think should be happening in the background. I get it gives you a way to sample it without actually playing it. But that's the whole point of playing it. Another thing to show off here is so how I got the control of the fish to work, as well as going up and down. Got a UFO as the character, which is invisible, also not solid, and connected it to the fish, so obviously the fish has to be counted as movable in order for you to be able to move it with the character. So you got stick up and down to move forward and backward, stick left, right to move left and right. And then to be able to use buttons for the up and down, you have to invert one of them because what these do is it'll give a positive one when you press either button, which will make it do the same thing when it's connected to the input. So you have to connect one of them to the plus minus inversion and then connect that to the input. So whichever one is set to the inversion will move the character down and the positive one will move the character up. Hopefully this helped you in making your next game. That's all for me though, so if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, take care.